Uh, good afternoon and welcome to Midday Live. It's coming to you from our news hub here at Adisawe Kanda in Accra. I am AC Benewa Otu, top of the bulletin this afternoon. NPP primaries to elect parliamentary candidates in over 100 orphan constituencies underway across the country, but not without court injunctions on some of the constituencies. Four people died of rabies in Ashanti region since the beginning of the year. Also coming up in business, Manila Electric Company Meralco has served notice of its intention to withdraw from the controversial power distribution services PDS concession deal with the Electricity Company of Ghana. All the international front voting is underway in Afghanistan's presidential election amid heavy security and threats from insurgents. And in entertainment, TV3's Talente Kids wins the Chartered Institute of Marketing Ghana CIMG TV program of the year 2018. We have these and more, including sports, all coming up. Stay with us. Now let's do a very first story where four people have died of rabies at some hospitals in Ashanti region since the beginning of this year. Officials from the veterinary services are appealing for public support in the vaccination of domestic animals. Here's a report by Benjamin Adu. Rabies is a fatal illness caused by the rabies virus transmitted through several means, especially the bite or scratches from an infected domestic pet, usually dogs. Cases of rabies from cat bites have also been reported. Out of eight cases of rabies reported in 2019, four of the victims died. Two of the deaths occurred in the Asante Akim North District, one from Obwase, and one from Kumasi. This year, 15,000 dogs out of a targeted 20,000 dogs have been vaccinated in the region. Ashanti Regional Director of the Veterinary Service, Dr. Emmanuel Edwodifa, described rabies as deadly but preventable. When vaccination is carried out, I'm sure we can reduce the incidence of it. It's a matter of the veterinarians, the public, you, the media, we all create awareness for people to be aware that the disease is there and it's preventable only by vaccinating, especially the dogs. As Ghana joins the rest of the world to commemorate World Rabies Day, dog owners are expected to send their pets for vaccination. <laughs> Well, so now let's give you more on the uh, elections ongoing now from the camp of the NPP and the new patriotic party, Eastern Regional Communications Officer David Pra is confident the party will win four of the six orphan constituencies in the 2020 parliamentary elections. Fourteen aspirants are vying for six orphan constituency slots in the region. Here's a report by Yvonne Nikre. The primaries would be held in six constituencies. It's German. Lower Manya Krobo, Yellow Krobo, Afram Plains North and South, and Upper West Achim. Out of the 14 aspirants for the six slots, one is a female. In 2016, the party closed up on the NDC during the general elections, and aspirants are hoping to cause a stir. According to the Regional Communications Director, Del Sujaman, Lower Manya, Upper West Achim, and a from Plains South constituencies are seats the party would be targeting, and then it is poised in winning them. Eastern region is the stronghold of the new patriotic party. Uh, we have 33 constituencies, uh, and we won 27. And then the six are for the uh, National Democratic uh, Congress. And so, as a party, uh, our target is to win four out of the six constituencies. 
an estimated 3,000 delegates are expected to vote in six orphan constituencies of the party in the Eastern Region. Meanwhile, the Eastern Regional Director of the Electoral Commission, Faith Amejake, says it has received ballot papers and registers in readiness for the MPP's primaries in six orphan constituencies on Saturday. The ballot papers and registers would be distributed accordingly to six voting centres where the elections would be held. Per EC's official record, 3,829 delegates are expected to vote in six orphan constituencies in the region. The regional EC director urged all stakeholders to respect the rules guiding the electoral process. We have received ballot papers, the, re the registers in respect of the elections. So we hope to have a successful election day. We believe that all stakeholders will be on board to make the election a successful one. Away from the Eastern Region and Upper West Regional Branch Executives of the New Patriotic Party say uh, the party will disown any member who gets himself arrested by the police during the primaries. According to the Upper West Regional Communications Director Ali Bukhari, the party is ready to maintain the five seats it secured in the 2016 elections. Here's a report by Yakubu Abdul Gafaru. The Upper West Region has six orphan constituencies. Lambusi, Nadoli Kalio, Wa Central, Wa West, Dafiama Isabuzie, and Jirapa constituencies. More than 3,000 delegates across the six orphan constituencies will be eligible to take part in elections. Regional Communication Director Ali Bukhari, in an interview with TV3, said any aspirant who needs security should request for protection from the police service. If a candidate is having issues with his security. In other words, if you think that somebody is talking you, if, if somebody is uh, uh, trying to harm you, what you need to do is to, uh, to uh, liaise with the leadership of the party to get you a uh, security uh, in the, from the police service. Who will take charge of your security for the, for the period that the elections will be conducted? Meanwhile, the Upper West Regional Office of the Electoral Commission said it has received all electoral materials to enable it to conduct tomorrow's exercise. And now a total number of 5,277 delegates are expected to cast their votes in 12 constituencies in the Upper East Region for 30 aspirants, including two women. Our Upper East Regional Correspondent Tanko Mohamed Rabiu has the rest of the story. 30 parliamentary aspirants are contesting to represent the New Patriotic Party in Saturday's parliamentary elections in 12 orphaned constituencies. The party in the region has only three certain members of parliament, Zibila, Navrongo and Timpani constituencies, out of 15 constituencies and the remaining 12 constituencies taken by the National Democratic Congress. A total of 5,277 delegates in all the 12 orphan constituencies will be voting. Nyaba Clestus is the Upper East Regional Secretary of the New Patriotic Party. Things are getting on. We are almost done except that. We are still anticipating to receive the number of bylaws that we are expecting in the region. I've just come from the Electoral Commission and the bylaws are not in yet. We still expect that by the close of the day, the bylaws will not be in, and, but all preparations are done. The Regional Secretariat has issued a circular warning aspirants to desist from campaigning on Election Day. The party is targeting at least 10 of the 15 parliamentary seats in the region. So we will be going to our reporters in a moment, you know, uh, to find out exactly what the situation is on the ground now. But before then, three district chief executives will be contesting in the ruling New Patriotic Party's parliamentary primaries in four orphan constituencies in the Western region. According to the party, preparations are far advanced to ensure an incident-free primaries, which will start, will start uh, at 7 a.m. and end 3 p.m. Our Western regional reporter, Eric Yao Eje, has put together the following report. There are 17 constituencies here in the Western Region. 13 of them are for the New Patriotic Party. The remaining four are for the National Democratic Congress. 
the primaries will be held in the four constituencies belonging to the National Democratic Congress classified as the orphan constituencies. They are Elembele, Wasa East, Amenfi Central and Amenfi West. Uh, so far we have um, five aspirants at the Amenfi West. Then you have two at the Amenfi Central. Then three at the um, Elembele. Then you have one at the Wasa East. Only one that we are going for uh, acclamation. That is the DC over there. Yeah. So so far I have 11 aspirants so far in Western region. Do you know the number of delegates? When you go to uh, Elambre, they have about 600. Amenfi West is also 650. Amenfi Central get about 550. When you come to Wasa East, it's almost 450 to 500. Out of the four orphan constituencies here in the Western region. All eyes will be on the Elembele constituency. The stakes are so high that we are told that the national chairman, Freddie Blay, also has interest in who becomes the parliamentary candidate for the party. The aspirants are current district chief executive, Kwesi Bonzo, regional treasurer, Homa Mieza, and Isaac Menla. Now, analysts have predicted that the election is between the district chief executive, Kwesi Bonzo, and the Regional Treasurer Homa Mieza. Contrary to popular political dictum, fear delegates, the district chief executive, Kwesi Bonzo, says that he doesn't fear delegates, that if you treat them right, they will also respond in equal measure. The delegates, they know what I stand for, they know what Bonzo K stands for, they know what we have done in the past, they know what we are doing currently, and they know what we have to offer going forward. So I think. All in all, the delegates will vote and give me the mandate to lead the party for the third time and then to capture the seat for the new patriotic party for the first time. Uh, some say fear delegates. I don't say fear. I say trust delegates. I trust the delegates. Uh, the delegates are very discerning. They vote on issues. They know why they want to vote for a particular candidate to lead the party. They know what I'm capable of doing as a third time parliamentary candidate of this constituency. And they know that. If they want any person who can wrestle this part, this constituency from the NDC, it's most okay. So I, I put my confidence and trust in the delegates. But I have confidence in the delegates more than in myself. District Chief Executive for Wasa East, Wilson Nafa, is going unopposed. I'm praying that the people will recognize the good works that I have done. Um, they've had DCs, they've had DCs. I'm sure they will appreciate that. Um, I have done pretty well with the DC, so if they make me the MP, I can even do more. The Western Region Office of the Electoral Commission says that it has received all the necessary voting materials to enable it to conduct a free and fair parliamentary primaries. Our officers at the various districts will convey the materials to the voting centers. In a situation where the voting goes beyond 5 o'clock, do you have enough measures to ensure that we are able to take care of lightning and all that? Ours is to ensure that the elections go on peacefully and we are prepared. How about the voting grounds? Are they accessible from your judgment? Yeah, they are. They are accessible. And the people who take part in the elections, they are all aware of tomorrow's elections. After tomorrow's exercise, what kind of party do you wish to see? We are going to, uh, tomorrow, elect uh, candidates who are actually going to project the policies of the, the government in those constituencies so that we can annex those seats. So after tomorrow's event, we believe that we all come together, rally behind that person and actually project the party, so uh, which is the vehicle to governance. Well, so voting is yet to start at Elembele, where the new patriotic party is organizing parliamentary primaries for four orphan uh, constituencies in the western region. Even though EC officials have been at the venue since 9 a.m., the delegates are yet to uh, fill the auditorium. Western regional organizer of the party, uh, Abdul uh, Ganiyu, says voting will start once the two get through um, two thirds of the voting. Uh, delegates. So our uh, Western Regional uh, reporter Eric Yao AJ joins us live from Elembele uh, to give us more. Good afternoon, Eric, and thanks for joining us. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Well, um, Eric, what more can you report from where you are? Uh, um, nothing much has changed. Um, the voting is yet to begin. 
I can report that the EC just finished setting up the place. We are not still sure as to what delayed the process because the official time that we're given was 9 a.m. Exactly. and vote will end at 3 p.m. But I can report that voting has not started here at LMBLA. Even well, so though all the candidates, all the, aspirants, all the three aspirants are here, okay. the electoral commission, the officials, they are here, the voting materials, they are all set. We are yet to get a signal for the voting to commence. Earlier, as you did indicate in your introduction, the regional organizer did say that if they're able to get to test of the voting delegates, they'll go ahead with the voting. I still have him by my side for him too. So exactly what is the reason why the process has not started? Um, I think um, for now, you were, you were here when you saw a person with yourself. Um, currently, I we speak, you know, they were coming from far and there was some raining in the metro uh, district. So it affected um, the cars who were carrying the uh, delegate to this venue. The, the Electoral Commission in its pronouncement also mentioned that there are no agents for any of the three aspirants. Mm -hmm. Now, we have brought attention of the Electoral Commission, so the names have been um, given to the Electoral Commission for now. What is the arrangement with the Electoral Commission? Because we know that it was supposed to start mine and end at 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. Now that you are yet to start, will it be extended? No, so, um, you know, the delegates are here. If the last person has to vote before 3 p.m., Fair enough, but if it goes beyond that, they are still in queue. So the last person will cast in vote before casting the key. And this resonates with all the three aspirants? Absolutely. Thank you very much. So, um, you know what, this is the situation here. I can report that still the voting has not be begun here at the LMBLA district. Well, Eric, uh, still stay on the line uh, because we want to find out um, if you have spoken to some of the delegates and even the, the, the mood over there, how is it like, you know, for the fact uh, that the process was supposed to start at nine and after about now, it hasn't started. Um, the, the, the look on, the, on their faces are that of dejection because some of them came here as early as seven and they were expecting that voting would start at nine. But as I speak, like I said earlier, Voting has not started. Uh, at a point in time, you will see a group of people getting agitated. Then you see the same delegates coming themselves down. So that is the mood here. People are not too happy about the fact that the exercise could not start at 9 a.m. as was officially stated. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we'll still we'll stay with you subsequently for, for, for more. Thanks so much. Uh, I have been speaking with uh, our Western Regional Correspondent, uh, Erika J, bringing us a uh, live feed from uh, Lembele uh, constituency, where up to about now, uh, we're told that the election hasn't started. Stay with us. We have more. And thanks for staying with us. Let's still stay with the NPP parliamentary primaries are uh, ongoing and right about now let's get to Kpon, Katamanso, where my colleague Josephine Frimpon has been monitoring events there and uh, reports now. So we are currently at Kpon, Katamanso constituency. So we have 695 delegates who are expected to cast their votes. Elections started exactly at 9 a.m. and we had a smooth process. There hasn't been any hitches yet. And for here at the Pong Katamanso, we have five candidates that are vying for the position. The first person is Hobson Adoye, and then the second person is David Quay Anan, and then the third person is William Ofosu Asante, and we also have Prince Darcy also on the bill. As the voting was going on. An incident happened here that we want to bring to the attention of viewers. One of the candidates, that is William Ofosu Asante, came out uh, angrily uh, with a message that there's, there's a certain message or a number on one of the telco's numbers, which is circulating an information that he has been uh, 
taken out of the race, which is a falsehood that is being perpetrated around, and has created some form of alarm here for those who are uh, casting their votes. So we will be engaging William to tell us exactly what he means and what is actually going on. Is it that your phone has been hacked or something? I do not think my phone has been hacked, but these are issues of security. So whoever is doing that, there are several applications out there to get this thing done. So all they need to do is to put my name on top, William 2020, and write whatever they want to write. But I want to reach out to my people through your big medium that it is falsehood and that William is the winning candidate. All those who are out there in the queue about to vote should remember it is too sure, number two. So, so uh, that, that is um, William there uh, speaking to us about the message. And if I could read out the message out here, it says William 2020, and it looks like it says that from the deepest of my heart, I truly thank you all for humbly coming here to. Uh, the message says that patrons, from the look of things, I cannot win this election, and I humbly throw my support for David Kweyanan, vote five number DQ. That is a message which uh, we have it here, and that is what is coming from, which is circulating around on all the delegates and uh, phone numbers. Well, uh, from this end, we will continue to follow the elections and bring to speed whatever happens here at Pong Katamanso. Justin Frimpon reporting for TV3 News. Thanks, Josephine, for the update. And we we'll also uh, be going back to Josephine for, for more. But uh, right now, the Amasaman constituency primaries has been cancelled following a court interlocutory injunction secured by a disqualified aspirant, Roxin Edu Bwahin. Some aspirants spoke with TV3. If you have party interest at heart, we are not saying that when the party has, you know, treated you unfairly, you still go ahead and then you let things go. But this injunction could have come earlier so that there will be room for us to make amends. And he has made sure that he has punished the party leadership, he has punished uh, the aspirants, constituency executives, we the delegates, as well as the people we represent. Everybody has been punished today. So Edouard has single-handedly punished the whole of the Amasama constituency this morning. I think our party uh, hierarchy they didn't help us. The reason is that um, they disqualified Edouard. Uh, I feel very sad today because all of us um, we are fully prepared to come and exercise our our right because we are um, party members and we are delegates. You see, you can see that all the aspirants, um, they have done a lot of preparation when talking about food, transportation and other things. And now, the thing is being cancelled. Look at the food. The food, they, um, uh, they have waste money. So, where are, where are they going to get money again to come and not, um, to prepare themselves to come for election again? Well, so let's still stay in Amasaman because some delegates have described the injunction as a punishment to the party. I don't work under the instructions of the Electoral Commission. The Electoral Commission is an independent body on its own. I cannot give any instructions to the Electoral Commission. What I know is that my director of elections called me. I also spoke to my regional chairman, asking them about the injunction. As a matter of fact, that is where I heard of the injunction first. And he specifically gave the instruction that don't go ahead to conduct the elections. And even the Electoral Commission also knows about it. Maybe it's the municipal or the district election returning officer who doesn't know about it. But I'm told, I'm reliably informed that the EC is aware that an interlocutory injunction has been placed on the elections. So as it is now, I'm unable to go ahead to let the election happen. And I'm not too sure the EC will come. Unfortunately, we arrived there only to be told that uh, an injunction has been placed on the election from the court. And so we, we've called the chairman to ask him whether it is true. And he confirmed that it is true and showed us a copy of the injunction order. In view of that, we have all agreed and so the election is not coming off. However, we've told the chairman that they must start leaving now since the election is not coming off because we don't know what somebody will stand somewhere and begin to do and so we are we, we, we are making sure that everybody leaves the ground to ensure that there will be no breach of the peace 
Well, so we apologize for the wrong insects. Actually, the visuals that you saw uh, had to do with the first story and not the other way around. Let's now get to the Ashanti region where my colleague uh, Inkum is standing by. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, Inkum, and thanks for joining us. Well, but even before we get to uh, our correspondent or, uh, there to update us on happenings there, let's look at uh, Asawase in focus. Uh, let's look at some basic facts uh, coming in from the uh, Asawase constituencies and we, constituency. And we have 163 polling stations making up uh, that particular constituency. Uh, there are about 115 executives from uh, the various polling stations uh, that forms, the, you know, the delegates. And then we also, uh, some facts from uh, Asawasi constituency, 17 uh, executives. We have 10 uh, patrons and a council of elders. In all, we have about 842 uh, delegates expected to affirm uh, the candidature of Alidu uh, Seidu. Uh, we know that, you know, even during the NDC primaries, there were issues at... Um, Asawase and even in the MPP. Also, there are some issues coming up and we have a reporter there who is trying to bring us all the issues uh, upcoming from this particular uh, elections. What exactly uh, is it with the Asawase uh, constituency? Good afternoon, um, Inkum, if you can hear me. Uh, what can you tell us? Well, we're trying to raise uh, Inkum on the line. Uh, so uh, we'll try and bring him back. Let's take a break here. We'll be right back. We now have Evan Sinkum on the line. Good afternoon, Evans. Thanks for joining us. Hello, Evans. If you can hear me, good afternoon. As I to you, uh, the constituency secretary, Majid, who is currently addressing the delegates. A sizable number of delegates have turned up the regional executives and some executives from the tell you that every line of statement I've heard here, I mean, it's about reconciliation. But I'll be talking to the constituency organizer of the Asawase constituency because he started it all. So Dauda will soon join me and tell me why they've consistently been talking about reconciliation. Exactly. Four. Ah, yeah, yeah. So as you can see, twins, yeah, no. Ah, and maybe I have a promise to be a problem, baby. And maybe I have a mobile so I call on you, cause no problem, baby. Then, baby. When the year second time, one candidate I didn't call 2016. Yes, I didn't call 2020. And see, I'm not challenging side then, abba, because next. Especially Ashanti region, Aswasi constituency, Afran place, and the Igra say, Ye call Muko no Kus. And to yes, I'm one, Musu, a water and nothing a maybe a casano, and I'm saying the Paninti, and was say, Ye and a dear mom, Senebel Biakma Bede, a Bekofu. All right, so you see, I asked him a simple question why he's been calling for reconciliation for the past two years. I asked him a simple question why he's been calling for reconciliation in every line of his statement. And he tells me that, I mean, from 2004, when this particular constituency was created, there has been intermittent tension anytime they hold events like this. So, I mean, he decided to call for reconciliation, calling on the delegate to just let bygones be bygones, because eventually what they are looking out for is annexing this particular state for the very first time for the NPP as far as the Aswasi constituency is concerned. So, um, Dauda, we understand 
the, the embattled presidential staffer who wanted to contest um, Seydou secured a court injunction sometime Thursday. Have you been served? And now I'm in the me me who court injunction be our constituency? They say MC ni na yake no na yeba page ni said ya chere amansi ni na na yako because your court injunction be baba me expect this and a capacity in penny for no eba never my information say ya the court injunction ba up to now me no can say they say the court injunction be our constituency and to me me say you may be na aiding the eba we all right so so I see I ask him if um, the as the constituency branch of the party have been served with the court injunction but. He said they have not been served. So for now, they are still waiting for the executives to join the delegates who have turned up here to commence the program. But I told you earlier that the constituency secretary is on the floor and given account of the um, of what the, the constituency has been like within the last couple of years. And let me tell you what, AC. If Ali Duseidu goes through this particular exercise, will have become the first candidate to have stood on a ticket of the MPP two consecutive times. 2004, it was Patricia Apiaje. 2008, it was Dr. Mohammed Abdul Kabil. 2012, it was Nana Ochre Enchi. And now, 2016, it was Alhaji Seydou Ali. And now, Ali has another opportunity to take the, uh, the party to the 2020 parliamentary elections. It's just a matter of time, but I can tell you that so far there hasn't been any nasty incident. It has been a very smooth exercise, only that we're just waiting for the executives to come here so the full program can commence. What I mean by that is that we are going to have an acclamation. An acclamation is just a matter of a loud shout from this delegate just to affirm the candidature of Seydou Alidou and that will be it. AC. Thanks so much Evan Sinkum for giving us a clear picture of what is happening in Kumasi. This is Let's do business now and Manila Electric Company Meralco has served notice of its intention to withdraw from the controversial power distribution services PDS concession deal with the electricity company of Ghana ECG. The Filipino company is blaming unfavorable political situation in Ghana for its decision. But energy experts say the country does not lose anything if it pulls out. Morocco President and CEO Ray Espinoza was reported to have said the company was planning to pull out its investment in Ghana's power distribution utility if the political situation does not improve. Morocco has 48% stake in PDS that was contracted by the government of Ghana to manage the operations of ECG for 20 years starting from Friday, March 1, 2019. However, government suspended the PDS deal on July 30 after discovering that the demand guarantee provided by the company was fraudulently acquired. Energy expert Kwame to says this turn by Morocco is surprising. I don't understand this political situation they refer to. I think they should be clear with us what they mean by political situation. Because looking at the whole saga, we don't see any political interference in the whole saga because it was being handled by MIDA. MIDA was the intermediary for MCC. But energy expert Kojopoku disagrees. There is no political risk in Ghana. Morocco is a private company that went and formed a private consortium. The government did not give Morocco a bunch of people to work with. They had freedom of association. So they should come and tell us where from that political risk and where from that instability in the country they talk of. It is their own doing. Energy expert Kojopoku agrees. Morocco, as I speak to you now, has not transferred one dollar mm. into Ghana. Morocco should come and show us the account and how much money they've transferred into Ghana. We all saw the report that made rounds when MIDA 
contracted an independent body to investigate all that went on with regards to their insurance and all that happened. We yeah. realized that it was the local Ghanaian partners that were raising money. One person brought $1 million. The other even had to go and borrow money from Cowbank. In that report, nowhere did it say that Miracle, who owns a substantive percentage of that consortium, brought $1. The company, in a response to the Philippine Stock Exchange probe into the development on September 23, maintained the position is espoused by the president. And that's all for business. Now let's get to the election mode again. And uh, I have my colleague uh, Armstrong, who is right now at Ningo Pram Pram, to bring us uh, what is happening in that particular area. Hello, good afternoon, Armstrong. Good afternoon. Well, so how are you doing and uh, what is the situation there where you are? Well, uh, here at Nimo from, from we have two people contesting. Uh, one, Alex Mate, who is my one on the ballot, and then uh, one, uh, Rita Aquile, who is number two. So earlier on, uh, you know, the election, election started exactly 10 a.m. But then, okay. before there was this uh, disturbance is here that brought in so much military uh, men who took over the process until after the police also came to uh, do what they can do. But now, as I speak to you now, there is a, a little bit, uh, uh, the place is somehow calm, but I can see some garden again where the police are rushing in. But first, uh, I, how you have with me, one of the... Well, I'm strong. I'm is, strong uh, if you can hear me. I'm strong. I can hear you. Yeah, if you can hear me. So you said there were some disturbances. We, we just want uh, to have a feel of exactly what the situation is over there. So what caused that? Well, so earlier on, we, we, uh, the, some of the little men told me that there was people that some, uh, one of the contestants uh, was uh, trying to bring in people who are not delegates to food. So that is how come the earlier on, the little men took charge of the entire process. That even I was prevented from getting in, in, into the where has been falling off. No camera, nothing. That's what the military, that was actually the, the military did because of an information they've gotten and they don't know who to start, whether it's, that's going to be done to the media man or anybody. So they didn't want anybody to get anywhere close to where the voting was taking place until the police uh, commissioner himself came here to uh, ensure and all So the queue that was formed earlier on has to be dissolved. Everybody has to go for them to start all over again. So now they call them uh, by... Area, they, 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 they mention names before you come. If not, nobody was allowed to come anywhere close to where the voting was taking place. Okay. I can see you right now. I can see the uh, the council chairman who earlier I was told was who uh, was campaigning for one of the candidates. That was an allegation made by uh, Alex Marty, one of the candidates who says the council uh, the council chairman is uh, actually campaigning for one person. So he's here right now. Uh, I don't know what to engage with him. The council chairman. Uh, so this is the three, um, and then what is that is happening here right now? No, my, my, my attention has just been drawn to an issue as to whether somebody is qualified to vote or not. And I'm hearing all kinds of arguments. It is unfortunate. It is not needed. We have an election committee that is headed by a rep from the national uh, 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 national executive with a regional executive and the constituency uh, 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 election committee. Anybody who has an issue relating to, to whether somebody qualifies to vote or not, mm. it is the responsibility of this committee to determine. It is not a responsibility of an actor, of the DC, of the police commander, or any other uh, uh, executive. Mm. So please, anybody who has an issue, talk quickly, raise that issue. Okay. Okay. So um, I think that we have to put that interview uh, on hold right now because we are finding it very difficult to uh, hear exactly what he's uh, talking about. Uh, stay with us. We'll uh, make things correct and then come back. NPP primaries and uh, right now we are going to Ododo Diodio where my colleague Messi Darling Loco is standing by to give us uh, up to speed on happenings there. Hello, good afternoon, Messi. Hello. Well, so uh, what can you tell us from uh, where you are right now? Okay, so currently, like you mentioned, I'm at the situation here is calm. 
um, we are stretching over 930 delegates to cast their vote. As we speak now, about 600 of the delegates have cast their vote. And when you are done casting your vote, you go to the um, executive of the party in the constituency to take your transportation of the city. There are four people contesting in this constituency. They include me, Lance Banaman. Uh, we also have right now Bibi Ayibose, as well as me, Yaboy Anand, and me, Nate Akele Nate. They are the four people contesting this. Um, the electoral commission, in order to ensure that uh, by 3 p.m., which is the deadline for the whole day, everybody has been able to start their vote. We have created two stations because there are 21 zones in this particular Position one. We have zone one to ten casting their vote to the agenda station two. We have zone eleven to twenty one also casting their vote. Uh, currently, the, the people here that have been able to cast their vote are sitting here. We have the police as well providing security here and ensuring that the delegates um, follow the instructions that have been laid down. Before you get into the premises of the Sacred Heart Institute, uh, where the election is taking place, the police are at the gate. You will be searched thoroughly before you are allowed to enter. And you must ensure that you have your accreditation on your child, your picture, and then your name, as well as the zone from which you are coming from. The agents of the various um, candidates are here monitoring the entire process. The lecture officers are also here ensuring that the people go through the process equally. Earlier, there was a bit of a scuffle here where the police had to come in to ensure that peace is restored. We had a, a delegate coming in to say that he was here to cast a vote from people. And there was, the agents didn't agree, so they were having a misunderstanding. And the process here is that if you want to cast a proxy vote, you need to go and present yourself to the election okay. committee. And then they will clear you before you go and cast the vote. So he was taken away, and then they asked those and they to cast the proxy vote. Away. So when they are called, they will be allowed to cast the vote. So currently, there is peace here. People are going about their business. Those who are done voting are waiting for oh, the okay. voting process to come to an end, I believe, after which um, the counting of the ballots and the declaration of Whoever wins this election is daddy. Well, thanks so much, uh, Messi, darling, local, um, for that information right there in Odudu Diodio. And let's do entertainment now. A TV3 talented caters won the prestigious Chartered Institute of Marketing Awards at the TV program of the year. Uh, as a TV program of the year 2018, that uh, was announced as the 30th CIMG Awards held in Accra. The winner for the TV program of the year 2018, ladies and gentlemen, TV3 talented kids. Media General's TV3 flagship reality show for children has been on the airwaves for 10 years. The CIMJ TV program of the year 2018 has been a nice on the cake for all kids in the country. Kenneth Nanado is head of entertainment, events and lifestyle at Media General. It's a great honor and a pleasure to be here tonight. And uh, of course, um, TV3 Talented Kids has over the years uh, done tremendously well by unearthing great talents. And of course, I want to first of all dedicate this award to all the talented kids in Ghana. And uh, of course, the, those who have won the competition and those who are yet to win. Talented Kids goes beyond entertainment. Talented Kids is a, is a multi-skilled platform. We have uh, judges or people counselors and people around who help to actually mentor the kids, who counsel the kids. Uh, sometimes when the kids even are not psychologically ready, they counsel them because they come from far and near to be part of it. So they need to be psyched properly. And so by the end of the competition, you can see growth in these kids. You can see maturity in these kids. And that is what Talented Kids stands for. The awards have certainly set the bar even higher, but Media General's TV3 promises to outjump the bar. 
Well, awards well deserved. Congratulations to TV3's Talent and Kids program. Let's do international news now. And voting is underway in Afghanistan's presidential election amid heavy security and threats from insurgents. For this afternoon, we'll bring you more on the NPP parliamentary primaries coming ongoing. Uh, subsequently, on News 360. My name is Esi Benewa Otu. Do stay tuned to TV3. Enjoy our programs. Good afternoon.